So I'm going to do something different today. And before I start, have a look at a little, little bit of this footage from the 1980s, because today I want to talk about Our Lady of Carn. So just have a look at this. And at Carn's Castle Connor in West Sligo, hundreds, sometimes thousands, were gathering for night vigils after four local teenage girls had reported seeing an apparition of the Blessed Virgin. In subsequent weeks, other sightings were listed here. Balls of fire, hosts. Sometimes there was even the scent of flowers. Members of the clergy, for the most part, stayed silent. But, as the cynics argued with the believers, the affair was the talk of the country. Then came the winter. The curiosity dwindled. Today, nine months later, motorists using the main Sligo to Ballinar Road are reminded that Cairns Castle Connor was once the setting for something out of the ordinary. Near the site of the reported apparition, cattle are left to graze peacefully. But in the field where the gatherings were centred, very definite alterations have occurred. A committee of local people is erecting a Marian shrine. Recently they acquired a life-size statue of the Blessed Virgin. When the foundations are completed, the statue will be placed in a grotto at the centre of the site. Alongside it will go another statue, this one of Bernadette. The locals carrying out the work have supplied their labour free of charge. The statues were purchased in England and imported. All the other materials were given either free of charge or at cost price. We intend to make a very pretty place out of this in the next few months. As you see, it's a bit rough at the present, but it was very rough when we started here. As you see, we've been in a very nice stone wall along here, and we're building a grotto here in the middle. This is only a temporary grotto now. So it's put up here for the sake of the visitors and people who pay their money that's coming. The weather was very bad, as you know, and it stopped the boys from working the last three weeks. So uh, we intend to have a very nice wall cap, and two nice gates, and nice grotto. We intend to tear them it. And as you see, we have trees planted all round about it. We have almost 100 trees planted here. So uh, we intend to put flower beds round the back and stages of the cross and so on like that. We can have all that work done by the anniversary on the 2nd of uh, September. The religious activity that took place in Ireland during last September, it seems to have died off in a lot of places, but it's continuing here. Why so? Well, not really. It didn't die off here. We have still big crowds coming Sundays, and we have a vigil here on the 2nd of every month, the anniversary. We have the four vigilers here all the time, and good crowds, some nights, there were very bad nights here, very bad weather, but we still had the good crowds. And on the, the, every Friday night for me, we have a vigil here. How did I hear about Cairns? Well, there's a very distant cousin of mine and his name is Brian Nugent and he wrote a book called The Marian Apparitions of Ireland. And uh, I'd always, I hadn't gotten this book and he had mentioned it to me. I said, I must get it. He has written other books. I do recommend you read all of his investigation on the Tomb Babies controversy. He's done an excellent historical um, presentation of tomb babies and the mother and baby homes and all of that discussion but he's also done a great book called Marian Apparitions in Ireland and I'd meant to get this book and then I forgot about it and one day we were messaging and he said Robert have you been out to Cairns and I said yeah I must go out there I totally forgotten and you know you put it on the long finger anyway one day I was going through a really bad uh, moment and um, wasn't able to pray wasn't able to get a sense of what was happening in my life. And all I could hear, I was actually in this office, and all I could hear was Our Lady saying, go to Cairns, go to Cairns. I said, okay, Googled it on my phone. Cairns, it's only, what, 10 minutes away from my house. And I'm here 20 years and I've never been out to it. So anyway, I got into my car and drove out to Cairns. As our, as our Blessed Mother always does, she provides peace, she provides solutions she's the untire of knots well, later when i went to medjugorje i understood you know our mother our blessed mother is a real mother she didn't stop being a real mother when she ascended into heaven she is the mother of god she's the mother of christ and our our lord left her to the church to saint john at the foot of the cross and she is Mater Ecclesia. She is the mother of the church. And she does intercede for us. She does love us as a real mother. I suppose when I was thinking about what was happening, you know, in the 1980s, because there was a lot of this phenomenon, 
But what happened was, you know, several events last year kind of struck me were going to Medjugorje. And in Medjugorje, Our Lady says, was saying to me, look, when you come back home, go to Cairns more, pray the rosary in Cairns um, and ask people to pray there. Now, I, I, before people get apprehensive, you know, always defer to what the church teaches and holds and definitive teaching and and uh, approvals of, of marrying apparitions and approvals of messages are, you know, this is just my fruits of my prayer. And uh, I'm not here saying or contradicting or giving you some message or something like that. But this is what, you know, I was getting in prayer, praying the rosary and Our Lady was giving me the vision of Carnes in Medjugorje. When I bought this book, which I was meaning to buy for, uh, for a long time, I found it in a secondhand bookstore in Belfast. And it's signed by Brian Nugent and it's dated Medjugorje 2015. And, and there's another thing that came strongly was when we did the men's rosary in Derry, uh, one man related his experiences as a child in, in Mount Mallory Grotto. And I'm just there thinking, all of these kids in the 1980s were having these experiences, were having these encounters of visions of Our Lady all over Ireland. And what was Our Lady trying to do in the 1980s? What was she preparing us for? What do we see now happening in the world? What did, you know, Our Lady was very, very, very clear in Akita. And people forget when the bishop went to Rome to get approval for Akita, he met with Cardinal Ratzinger. And Cardinal Ratzinger said, this is Fatima. This is, this is lining up with Fatima. And then we see, you know, we see now in 2023, we see bishops against bishops and cardinals against cardinals. In an unprecedented way, unlike we've ever seen in the church, in especially over questions of faith and morals, how we're, what is marriage and what is gender, and, you know, basic things of faith and morals now being held up for discussion in our church. And we see cardinals against cardinals, Bishops against bishops, we see, like in Garabandal, saying less and less importance was going to be given to the Eucharist. And Our Lady is a real mother. She understands our humanity. And she's calling us back, as a mother would do, to behave, you know, pray. Don't forget her son. So I'm just going to read you a little bit about uh, Karen so that you understand it. And this is from Brian Nugent's book. Another of the important episodes from the summer of 1985 occurred in Sligo on a lonely road near Ballina, County Mayo. It is important for the fact that there was no statue involved and hence it's, it sinks the skeptics' claim that since these 1985 incidents were caused by people looking too closely and for too long at statues that may have been lit up at night and were some distances from the crowd, as was true to a degree in Banlas Spittal. Uh, for people who are not aware, there was a lot of moving statues in the 1980s and this phenomenon kind of was, was interesting. But Cairns, there was no statue. The four girls, Mary Hanley, Patricia, Colleen and Mary McGuinness. Patricia and Colleen are sisters and Mary is a cousin of theirs. Uh, here described what happened. On the 2nd of September 1985, the four of us were walking down with a friend to a local shop. We left the house at 20 past nine at night and on the way back, we were just talking about general things like school and boyfriends, things like that. And where the grotto is now, more or less directly across the road from here, I just happened to look up in the sky and saw a huge figure of Our Lady and St. Bernadette. They were both dressed in brilliant white. There was a huge star to the right of her head. After I had seen this, I was absolutely terrified and I started screaming. Colleen was standing right beside me, so I told Colleen to look at what I had seen. Colleen, when I looked up, I saw our lady. She appeared to be very close to us, as if I put out my hand, I could touch her. But I would assume she was up in the sky. She was brilliant white and there was a star to the right hand side of, of her head. She had a veil 
she had a veil that just came down on her face. She was very motherly. She was very kind looking. And I obviously got very scared. And I was scared. Mary, for she was the first to see it. And she touched me. And I started screaming and ran away from her. And then Patricia looked up. Patricia, I couldn't see what they saw at first. And I didn't know what they were screaming about until Connie grabbed me. And when I looked up, I saw a great white figure of Our Lady with a star on her right hand side of her. And I couldn't see her face, but I do remember feeling calm. And then I touched Mary, who did not see it. Then after that, Mary McGuinness. When I looked up again, like the girls, I saw a large figure of Our Lady. But unlike the girls, I saw her actually great white. I saw her in actually great white, a great white colour as opposed to a brilliant white. I could see the folds of her cloak. Again, like Patricia, I could not see her face as well as I couldn't see St. Bernadette. And I do not witness the star to her right hand side on her head either. And like Patricia, myself and Patricia seemed to be calm as opposed to Colleen and Mary, who were both frightened. I don't know why we were calm. Colleen McGuinness. Then Patricia tried to calm us down and she said that it was Our Lady and she wasn't going to do us any harm. And we started saying a few prayers and we proceeded to go up to the first house, which would be Mary Hanley's house. And as we walked, Our Lady just floated ahead of us and stayed with us the whole time. I had mixed feeling of believing Patricia that everything was going to be okay and yet scared at the same time. And when we reached Mary Hanley's house, a dark cloud just came and covered Our Lady and then that was gone. The apparition was over. We proceeded then to Mary Hanley's house and her mother was letting out a neighbour and she knew something straight away, something had happened because she said was like a glow or a halo of light over the four of us and she knew something had, had happened. Luckily for us, when we told her, she believed us straight away because of the way what she saw when we arrived there. Normally the four of us would be out for a bit of fun and a bit of crack and you know we would have thought that would say you know don't be silly that didn't happen you're making it up go home and rest the rest of you for a sort of while but we were very lucky once she believed us we felt calmer that you knew so this is the account of and i'll go through some more of it so now i'm going to take you out to this shrine i'm going to drive out there so that you can see this place and as i said what i was getting in medjugorje was our, when when i was to come back to ireland was to go and pray as much as i could at this shrine um that you know this was our lady prepared this for some reason in this this remote refuge spiritual refuge on the the foot of the Ox Mountains, you know, it's 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 very, very beautiful. And, uh, I do encourage people, if you're around this area, you have this amazing opportunity to go and pray a rosary. And you will find peace there. If you're suffering from depression, if you're suffering from anxiety, if something is not going well in your life, go to Cairns, you will find peace there. That is what Our Lady said. That is what I experienced. And it's for a reason Our Lady goes... You know, putting these people in your lives, putting these places in your life. You know, I, you know, I meant to buy this book and then it just appears in, in a bookstore in, uh, in, in Belfast. Second hand bookstore in Belfast. Um, and I get inspired to go out there. And as I said, I, this is just my fruit of prayer. I'm not saying, making, casting or telling you that this is, you know, verified church approved marine apparition but i do know and i can tell you hand and heart nothing bad comes from praying a rosary at a marine grotto i mean if you think around ireland there are many places where you see statues of our lady and there's no historic apparition or supported apparition behind a statue placed in a little grotto there but our blessed mother she loves it when we encounter her there when we pray there 
at these different places. So now I'm going to take you out there. Let's enjoy uh, visiting uh, Our Lady of Carnes Sanctuary Grotto. So, arrived out here to Cairns, uh, it's 14 minutes from my house. It's, a, it's sad that I've lived here for many years, nearly 20 years before actually visiting here. And I suppose it took Brian Nugent, his book, to um, remind me of this place. And one day, was, as, I, as I mentioned, I wasn't feeling well, a lot of problems, stuff going on in my life. And sitting in my office, at home and our lady says go to Cairns come here so I'm just going to take you through walk you through this site which is incredibly beautiful and um, yeah this is the uh, the shrine our lady of Cairns that is beside my house so let's have a look at it So this is the original little chapel that they that they built and they have the stations of the cross here. Very beautiful. They they did a great job. You see our lady of Lourdes and St. Bernadette across. Go 
in here. You can light a candle. Smells of incense or roses or something. I don't see any fresh roses, or are they? Somebody must have sprayed. Are these fresh? Uh, somebody must have sprayed rose scent here because it's, it's a very, very strong smell of roses and I don't know where it's coming from. I don't know if it's the candles are smelling. It's, it's, it's very strong. But anyway, this is, the, this is the original, one of the original grottos. Grotto. Uh, you're not far from the Ox Mountains and um, for people that don't know this side of the country there was a famous priest from here who died in the early 1990s Father Patrick Payton and he is from Atimas which is literally 20 minutes drive from the shrine so I'll, I'll do a video on, on him uh, and uh, yeah very very peaceful so Very, very peaceful. So if you're, if you're looking for peace, um, being able, somewhere to pl pray at this, um, this part of Ireland, come to Cairns. You can actually park the car here and go for a walk. And there's this new chapel that's been built here. bathrooms they have fresh roses but and they fake roses in the other chapel but the smell of the of the roses was incredible in the other place. So this is the, the small chapel that's been built here, Faith Hope. And uh, yeah, I do recommend you can just come, sit down, relax, uh, say a rosary. It's a very peaceful and beautiful shrine to visit. Um, very, very, very beautiful, very beautiful. check where's the smell of roses coming from these are all fake <laughs> I don't know where the smell of roses is here but this is the Carnes Grotto Anniversary, 2nd of September, 1985. So, if you're driving from Ballina to Sligo, I do recommend that you come here. Beautiful shrine, beautiful place to pray, very quiet. Um, there's literally nothing here. It's very strange to come to a Marian shrine and you're and uh, there's absolutely nobody here. And I think that's that's kind of beautiful in a way. It, it's simplicity. There's no shops, there's no tourists. <laughs> it's just a very, very simple shrine where you can come and pray. Uh, you have the Ox Mountains there. You have the 
Mass Rock, you have actually Mass where Father Payton, the, ro the Rosary Priest, came from, you know, 20 minutes away, the other direction. And then you have this beautiful silent shrine here, Our Lady of Carnes. Um, do I believe she appeared here? Yes, I do. That's my personal opinion. That's what Our Lady said to me in Medjugorje. Um, but as I said, I leave it up to the church to discern all of that. You know, the church is always very wise and walks very slowly and measures and tests everything. Um, but, and over time, but uh, I, f f there, f the, my own experience is she. I've been given a lot of peace here. It has helped me. It is right beside my house. Why did, why did I land up here in the west of Ireland? I am from Meath. I'm from the other side of Ireland. And I've landed here. And, uh, and I think Our Lady wants something in this place. She wants us to encounter that peace. She wants us to encounter her son. She wants us to be healed. She wants to be healed in places like this, where you come and you encounter that amazing peace that her son can give. And as I said, you know, let our, our, our beautiful church with over time discern um, these places. Um, but there's nothing bad has ever come from praying a rosary at a Marian Grotto. And as I said, what I did was I literally parked my car there and I actually sat in the car and I was looking at this grotto and the peace that was coming over me, the, the healing really in a way that came from coming here. So yeah, do recommend to recommend that you that you come and visit this this Marian shrine in the west west of Ireland um, pray, sit here pray a rosary uh, park your car and go for a walk clear your head you know these places are very very special anyway God bless you and take care look after yourselves bye bye